Uh, first of all, Assalamu alaikum. Thank you everyone for joining in. Uh, my name is Khwaja Fawad Latif and I'll be your resource person for today. Now, in this session, we are going to talk about how to write for high ranked journals. We all have, obviously, since we all are scholars, researchers, we all have tried to find out the way it to write for high quality or high rank journals. Not long ago, I was also searching for answers as to what makes people write for these high quality journals and how can they publish in high rank journals. I too faced rejection. Uh, if I recall, I think it was more, more or less 20, 30 papers got rejected before my first paper got into review. And that was also rejected, obviously, but it still it took me 20 to 30 papers to get into that process of review. But what I did was I learned from every single step and I identified what was missing in my papers. And it took me around three, four, five years uh, to accumulate the information, accumulate the data to find out actually what gets published. It's a long journey and obviously I'm still in, uh, in the process. I've managed to publish in a good quality journals, Alhamdulillah, but still uh, there is a long uh, road ahead. The objective of this session is to help young researchers, scholars, those who are doing their PhD or have recently done their PhD, those who still miss out on some key aspects of what gets published or how to write and in, in high rank journals so here is a brief introduction of myself um, actually i'm currently working as assistant professor in department of management sciences uh, comsets university islamabad at a campus i published in over 20 research journals some of them are uh, ABS 3 star as well, uh, ABDC A or A star and almost all of them, actually all of them are imperfector journals. Analytically, my expertise include or I'm a keen learner of SPSS, Smart PLS, IBM, SPSS, AMOS, M plus, R uh, and in R basically my focus is on Laban, uh, fuzzy set qualitative comparative analysis, Atlas and uh, these are the few softwares that I work on. You can search me on Google Scholar and uh, my Publon profile. You can just search on Google uh, Publons for Jaffa Wad Latif and you'll have my profile. Now, uh, this is how the session would work. Uh, I, I would, I would uh, request you to first of all, uh, keep your camera off, uh, your mics off. If you've got any question, kindly uh, please note the questions and we will have a detailed question and answer sessions at the, uh, session at the end. Any problem, you can put it in the chat box and uh, uh, my fellow colleague Umar Farooq Saib Zada will obviously answer those questions while if I am busy in the presentation. Uh, any technicality or any issue, Umar will uh, answer that question. Thank you. Now, let's start. What are the objectives of this session? What are we going to learn? We are going to learn on how to identify research gaps using papers published in high rank journals. We will focus on how to store necessary information. We will learn how to write a captivating and engaging introduction with focus on the structure and format of a good introduction. We will focus on identification of key elements of a literature. We will focus on how to structure, format and shape a critical literature review. And we will focus on what is the word critical. Because I myself uh, have always been asking myself before I got this answer that what is this critical? How can I write a critical literature review? We will focus on how to propose and present a research methodology and to gain an insight into identification of key analysis techniques that shall be used in a research study. And finally, we will discuss what are the key ingredients of a research discussion and how to identify and write implications and limitations and future research directions. Now, a research paper must have all these things in place. Failure to have even a single one of them will get your paper rejected. 
I've got a few videos on uh, uh, you, my YouTube channel on how to publish in a research journal and there uh, in I've also talked in detail about what gets the paper rejected but obviously we'll be talking in detail about these things in this session as well now why was my paper rejected over the years I've seen uh, more rejection than acceptance and everyone has actually so keeping in mind my experience I've come up with a few uh, things that actually got my paper rejected the first thing for the first one is the manuscript does not fall into the domain of the journal sometimes what we do is we are in a hurry to publish our research and while we are in a hurry to publish our research we do not focus on what journal are we targeting we just finish our paper and we submit it, it into a journal now what happens is what we are thinking is we are thinking that okay what will happen it will obviously get rejected we can we will submit it into another journal but what we do not understand is that we are losing on a valuable time because a high quality journal or a journal will take at least one or two months to process your paper normally and you lose on to those two months so whenever you finish a paper and you you are thinking of submitting it into a particular journal what you need to do is you need to identify you need to clearly identify what journal should I submit in now there are different uh, jour journal finders that you can use uh, Elsevier has got their own journal finder that you can use or you can simply google journal finder and they will ask you for your abstract and keywords and when you just submit those abstract and keywords into that uh, uh, form they will obviously present you with certain options now this is one of the most the second is one of the most critical reason lack of clear identification of theory we sometimes fail or most of the time fail to identify the theory that we are using to explain the relationship some of some of the time students come up to me and ask okay why or how do i identify the theory obviously i will be explaining this in detail but they fail to understand what the theory means theory helps you identify and understand and ascertain how different variables in your model are actually linked with each other for example if you are focused on establishing relationship between say corporate social responsibility and organizational performance now obviously you can write how corporate social responsibility is linked to organizational performance there is a lot of existing research on how the two variables are related but what you do what you fail to do is you fail to identify how these two variables are related with each other in light of a theory if you express the, this relationship in light of uh, a resource based theory this will add to the strength of your literature so every time you are obviously going through detail of writing a literature you should clearly identify the theory how you would do that we will be looking uh, in, in detail uh, in uh, during the course of this session the third is lack of clear identification of research gaps and limitations now there are two ways one can express the research gaps the first that is normally done by our researchers is that what they do is they just said that we could not find particular research explaining the relationship between these two variables now this is very weak this shows that you fail to clearly justify the identification of gaps what you need to do is what you need to start with is what relationships are available in existing research rather than just jumping into saying that okay the the research the researchers could not find any uh, details pertinent to this particular idea or these particular relationship now this is very weak what you need to do is you need to identify what is available in the existing research and then based on that you would say okay this is what is available and this is what you could not find this actually gives you uh, a ground to express uh, your own assertion and your own justification so and sometimes most of the time even students do not write this that this is what they could not find they, they just mention the importance of the variables obviously the variables would be important 
but what you need to do is you need to identify or clearly identify the gaps and limitations of existing research so we'll be talking about this in detail now the manuscript fails to highlight the contribution of the study now why are you conducting a research the reason that you are conducting this research is that you need to add to the body of knowledge failure to express what you are contributing to the body of knowledge will get your paper rejected and if you read through a paper the last or second last paragraph that you see in the introduction section is on the contributions of this study we will obviously be looking it into the practical examples of contribution in, of this study now for instance you are the next next thing is uh, you are studying something that has already been established that has already been studied in detail so try to study try to relate or find out something that is new now the concepts and operationalization is not aligned or there are not in alignment this is very important for instance you are studying university social responsibility this is a concept uh, i've got a paper on this as well uh, i'll share it now you are trying to study university social responsibility but your questionnaire has got questions on economic dimension now if you look at the universities universities in general are not profit making entities so you do not ask about economic dimension of the university you can ask about operational dimension of the university so the concept that you are studying and how you are operationalizing it how you are going to measure it what questions you are going to ask this this should be properly aligned with each other the next obviously uh, is lack of critical literature review now what you have done is or what a research scholar might have done is uh, they or he or she would have mentioned for example that mr x said this mr y said this mr z said this and because of this i am saying this now this is not critical literature review this is annotated bibliography and this leads to weak hypothesis development next is lack of appropriate methodology so you haven't followed the appropriate methodology that you should have followed that includes the analysis that you have done for instance you have not established the reliability and validity of the constructs for instance uh, uh, your model was too complex and you used simple linear regression or did a regression analysis separately for each of the hypothesis the last two things are very important your flow and structure and your language most of the time the students or the scholars think that okay they can just submit the paper and they can work on their language later this is utterly wrong this is your first impression you cannot just submit the paper for rejection this is actually submission of paper for rejection i've been a reviewer for some journals and when i get a paper and if it hasn't got the right language most of the times i reject the paper i do not go into the detail of the paper why what's the reason i should go into the detail of the paper why am i not going into the detail of the paper because the scholar was not serious this shows the seriousness of the scholar your flow your structure your language this shows how serious a scholar you are for instance even if you have formatted your abstract in times new roman and you have formatted the rest of your uh, text in say arial this shows your lack of seriousness those high quality journals or those journals people from round the world submit to these journals and failure to actually focus on these key aspects lead to your rejection if you follow these 10 things i bet that you will obviously get your paper accepted but you will have to follow these 10 things in letter and spirit i do so uh, umar who is uh, a co-author with me in most of my papers um, and you will have workshops or seminars with him as well so he and we 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 follow these things to letter and spirit now moving on here are a few examples that actually uh, i received recently or maybe in the last couple of years about or the rejections that i faced now one of the papers or one of the journals i submitted to they said that your paper actually is out of focus for this journal 
Now they sent me this email after maybe if I remember correctly four weeks. So I lost four weeks of my time. The next is I failed to check the author gu guidelines. My paper was 11,429 words. The journal recommended 7,000 words. Now here there is one important thing. Sometimes what we do is we fail to take care of this thing. Sometimes we keep on this deleting spree and we start deleting things from our paper and our paper lose quality. Now if you think that you cannot delete stuff from your paper, you should not target that particular journal that is low on word count. You should target another journal. And write a cover letter with your paper. Most of the times when we submit our paper, we do not write a cover letter. You should write a cover letter with your paper expressing why your journal has this higher word count. You should explain to the reviewer or sorry the editor why this paper is worth publishing in the journal. Not just copy and paste the abstract from your uh, paper into the cover letter. Uh, this is another rejection example. Uh, lack of clear English. The English wasn't very good. And the other example is poor analysis. Now the analysis wasn't poor actually. Uh, now we have got the paper uh, in review in this journal. The analysis wasn't poor. This is another important thing that one should consider. Each journal has got their own structure, own format, own type or own way of publication. What you need to do is whenever you are targeting a journal, download a paper from that journal and see what kind of analysis they, prefer, they prefer, what kind of structure they prefer, how they are writing the introduction, how they are writing the literature review, what's the flow of, what's the structure of literature and what's the structure of every single section in their uh, uh, paper or what the paper they publish. Now in this journal when we submitted our paper we did everything but what we did not do is we did not express the lack of goodness of model fit. That's the only thing we lacked. So what we did was we again did the, the goodness of fit test and we submitted to this particular journal. We again reviewed our English uh, and obviously you can use Grammarly. I uh, regularly use Grammarly uh, to check my English, uh, the paper in our in, uh, in the, uh, the paper for its English, for its comprehension and then we submit our paper. Now once we did that, we submitted the paper and now it's in review. So you, we all can do this. Just look into the structure and format of the paper that is published in that particular journal and then shape your paper accordingly. This will give you a heads up. The reviewer will know that you have gone into depth to obviously uh, publish in that particular journal. The next thing is address the comments. I've got a video on this on how to address the comments. I'll share those videos that I am obviously referring to in this uh, session. Sometimes what we do is we do not take the reviewer comments seriously. I've seen people or I've seen authors submitting their paper after review and what they do is that they try to cut corners. They, they obviously reply to some of the comments and they obviously put the rest other comments under the carpet. Do not do this. This creates a bad impression. Reply to every single comment of the reviewer even if he or she has asked or said that okay this was a good paper. Reply to this comment as well. If he or she has mentioned okay that you missed a full stop. Reply to this comment as well. Reply to every single comment. Most of the times what we do is we fail to reply to all the comments and this creates a sense of mistrust. You should trust your reviewer and make sure that you make every single change possible. Now what's the format of a thesis or uh, a paper? The general format. These are the things, six things that should be there. You should write an introduction. There should be a literature review. There should be a research methodology. There should be data analysis and results. There should be a discussion, conclusion, limitations and future research directions. And in the end, there should be references. Now what's included in each and every section? Let's talk about this. 
but before going into that detail let's say uh, how do we get to a topic this is particularly important this is very important uh, sometimes what we do is we do not know what topic to research on and we select any topic and what happens is that we actually fail to select the right kind of topic now how do you actually select your topic we all have an area of interest mine is um, general area is say hr and in hr i prefer to write about corporate social responsibility leadership internal marketing and things like that now how do i actually go on from here now i know that okay this is my area of interest this is what the topics that interest me now how do i move further from there how do i get ahead from there now the first thing is that you need to look into what is available particular to this particular topic now what has been done in this particular area now failure to do the, do so obviously you you might do something that has already been done but it is also important that you do something that you you clearly understand for example my area of interest is hr but i never work in compensation management i find it boring i find it uh, some kind of uh, fatigue oriented i find it a uh, difficult to work with but if it's something related to leadership uh, something related to social responsibility and employee behaviors i find it easy i can get my head around it so you should always select a topic select an area that is easy for you to understand and then there are obviously gaps and limitations in existing research pertinent to this particular area so this is particularly important now just give me a second uh, because some people are saying that they cannot join so i just need to check whether we are okay moving on now how do ident i i identify research gap this is very important because without research gaps there is no research the first thing that you can do is you can search through latest research now okay there is another question that one should ask oneself where is this latest research recently or when i when uh, since i've been teaching i've been teaching since um, 2011 uh, i did my phd in 2016 now some of the times students come up to me and they come up with a paper and they say that okay this is the paper that has been written and these are the gaps that have been identified in this paper when i look at the paper i tell them well this is not from a quality journal and then they ask what is a quality journal let's identify a general guideline as to what is a quality journal for a business management um marketing business management uh social sciences in our case emerald sage stringer science direct Wiley, Taylor, and Francis, uh, Jastor. These are some of the quality databases that you can search. Because anything that you get from these papers are perfectly peer reviewed. So you search through these databases. Now another question that that might be asked. Okay. what to search when i search for a database or in a database i get thousands of papers now if you are looking into identification of gaps this is particularly important that you just go through the last maybe for example if there are uh, 30 40 papers published in last 4 weeks these are good enough to identify the gaps in all these databases now if you search through and you find only two papers or three papers in existing research then you might have to go to like 6 months last 6 months so this is particularly important 
you search through good databases when you read good obviously your expression is good but if you read bad your expression suffers so what you need to do is search through latest research in these good quality peer reviewed databases and these they will have one of the top journals in the world so the next is there could be two types of gaps now once you read through these papers maybe 5 10 papers you will start to get an idea of what research is or how to express the gaps and you will come up with gaps your own self you might not need even the gaps expressed in those papers so what are the what is explicit research gap and what is implicit research gap for example let's say you are or you have gone through a paper and once you have gone through a paper uh, let me share a paper with you uh, let me open a paper and we can discuss explicit research gaps okay i hope you can see the paper now okay this is uh, a paper that uh, we wrote in 2009 with uh, professor fredrik merriman from uh, spain now what is explicit gap now let's see this is the model that we actually tested now this is the model that we tested now what you can do is if you are looking for explicit gaps in research what you can do is you can go into the limitations and future research directions of the of the paper every paper every single paper will have it sometimes they are with this this uh, section number and heading and sometimes they are merged into the discussion section now for instance that's the model that i have tested or we tested now what you need to do or what you want to do is you need you want to enhance this model and you want to conduct your own research in this area and you're looking for explicit gaps so what you can do is you can go into this paper look into the limitations and future research directions and in the end read through this and you will find this this research explored the role of only one mediator career satisfaction however other variables such as self efficacy promotion focus career commitment empowerment at work work life enrichment job stress and employee well being also have the ability to explain the relationship between two variables now this is an explicit gap something that is available in research so what you can do is you can have servant leadership as independent you can have life satisfaction as dependent and you can have two or three of these variables as mediator for your own model and you can refer to this paper that okay this paper actually asked for further research in this area and at, apart from this you can read through this papers introduction as well because this is the latest paper and you can copy some of the gaps that they have used to express your own gaps as well for instance let's say if i am interested in doing servant leadership life satisfaction and one of those research gaps that are mentioned in this paper what i can do is apart from using latif and merimon as a reference for gaps i can use this as well say van deren donk 2014 servant leadership is relatively uh, is in relatively early stage so i can use this reference in my own paper i can use bavik in my own paper as well i can use lu as a reference in my paper as well so this 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 way i'm not just actually uh, actually stimulating or conducting a research based on just a single identification of gap i am using multiple sources to strengthen my study strengthen the expression of my gap now what we were talk, talking about explicit research gaps now so something that is already available so what you can do is in order to have explicit research gaps what you can do is you can go into the limitations and research directions section or future research direction sections of the paper and in there you will find that the researchers would have identified how to take this existing research forward in this case in this paper i'll share the paper with you as well 
in this paper uh, we asked for the future researchers to look into further or other mediators in existing research now what could be those mediators those could be career commitment those could be employee well being those could be promotion focus career commitment empowerment at work now apart from this obviously you can use this research to explain your gaps or explain the limitations of existing research what normally i suggest is that use this paper to further strengthen now getting back uh, we will again start talking about uh, the explicit gaps so where are these explicit gaps these gaps are in the limitations and future research direction section now in this case for example i am interested in further improving this model so what i do is i go into the limitations and future research direction and i see okay the researcher has recommended certain mediators to be used okay these are the mediators i want to use or i will use what i do is i make my own model with two mediators or two other two new mediators uh, one of them is promotion focus and the other is career commitment now here is an important bit now what you do is you start writing your own introduction and when you are writing your own introduction you just mention in a paragraph that latif and merimon called for further research into the relationship of servant leadership and life satisfaction and they asked for inclusion of career commitment and promotion focus as mediator and you just finish your introduction by writing this and you obviously write about the contribution and other bits this is still very weak you should obviously use multiple gaps not just expression or just not just one single gap from one single paper now what you can do is the easy way is obviously you can search for more papers in this area latest paper and search through those papers and get the gaps what you can do is the paper from where you have taken these variables as gap you can just go into the introduction of that particular paper and see what gaps did they utilize now what you do is uh, once you have got the gaps from limitations and future research directions it's it's a pretty it's what you can do is what we normally do is we mention that okay these are the gaps or for example mr um, latif and merimon asked for further research into the relationship of servant leadership and life satisfaction and they called for the inclusion of career commitment and life uh, and uh, promotion focus as mediators now if you write just these two lines obviously this is a gap but this is very weak what you can do to strengthen this gap is that use the same paper go into their introduction and see what gaps they have mentioned what you can do is just go into their introduction and in this case if we see this paragraph this paragraph actually highlights and uses latest references to further highlight the need to study servant leadership and its outcomes so what you can do is you can take the gaps from this existing paper what is normally required or what is normally suggested is that you go into existing research and obviously what you can do is look into these papers read their introduction read their limitations and future research direction and use their limitations and mention them and refer them that these these people have called for further research into this area you need to strengthen your gaps you need to provide as much gaps as possible but obviously you should not uh present too much of it because obviously uh, you cannot express uh, a problem statement that is very vague you should be focused now moving on these are explicit gap what are implicit gaps for example you are going through research papers what you are doing is you are going through research papers studying one research paper other research paper um, another research paper now what happens is while you are reading through research paper you you get your own idea about the concept and while you are going through these research paper what you do is you find that okay this research or more or less research in on this topic has particularly focused on a business and a business or corporate sector for instance while i was going through servant leadership papers or while studying servant leadership i found out that more work or significantly higher amount of work 
on servant leadership has been done has been done in the area of corporations or corporate sector and there is very limited research in the area of education so how would you go on to finding or how would you find implicit research gaps now implicit research gaps you can only find implicit research gaps once you read enough once you start reading enough you will find out that okay the existing research has focused on a particular area and then based on those you can express your gaps by mentioning that these are the areas in which the research has focused now you need to document your literature review how do you document your literature review once you start reading about the paper once you start reading the paper what you can do is you can obviously start documenting your literature review keep track of what has been done reuse reuse the successful strategies for future papers describe your search process for your manuscript justify your search process eventually it can help you build a critical literature review how can one document a literature review how can one store information how do you store information and what information should be stored you should focus on writing or storing the title of research the objectives of that particular research the research questions they have asked or hypothesis they have proposed the theory that they have used now this is how you identify the theory for your own research once you are storing information about the variables in an excel sheet you will when you are going through that particular paper you will identify different theories that have been used pertinent to a particular variable and this will in future help you identify okay if i am working on servant leadership and commitment or i am working on social responsibility and performance now previous research when linking leadership with commitment have used social exchange theory or have used leader member exchange theory now this will give you an idea okay we can use leader member exchange theory with servant leadership and career commitment as well you should store what variables have been studied in existing research the independent variable the dependent variable the mediators the moderators what gaps did they did, did the existing research fail now this will help you get, get a clear idea as to what gaps have been addressed and what gaps could be addressed in the future what was the sample size and technique used in existing research this will strengthen your methodology what were or who were the respondents what were the results this will help you write your literature and will help you write your discussion as well where you are actually comparing the results of your study with existing research what were the gaps of or what were the limitations of existing research and what future research direction did they propose once you have all these as separate column in an excel sheet 10 or 20 papers you can easily draft your own model based on what is available in existing research and you will write and you will be able to write a comprehensive introduction as well moving on how do you write an introduction and what are the key ingredients of a good introduction now in order to write an introduction what you can do is you start with the value of the topic in general these are six or seven things that are particularly important when you are writing your introduction the first thing or any paper that you are reading it actually starts with value of the topic in general now what is meant by the value of the topic in general this means that you start expressing or you start writing about why this particular topic is worth studying why this particular topic is important in the field of business and management for instance in this paper we have started with servant leadership is a holistic le leadership approach focusing on follower development in ethical rational emotional relational and spiritual dimension now if you read through 
this particular paragraph this actually explains the importance of servant leadership if you read through any paper any good paper published in these databases what you will come to know is that they always start with the value of research they always start with why this particular research is important they always start with value of that particular topic in general now having done that the next thing is value of your topic in the field or area why is there a need to study the concept now in this case what we did was we actually studied this concept of servant leadership in higher education so why is this particular topic important in higher education now if you read through this paragraph what we are doing here is we are expressing why servant leadership is important in higher education so your your introduction should be very well structured so you start with your value of topic in general or if you are focusing on a particular area the next thing you do is you you write about value of topic in that particular field the next thing is what research is available in that particular field you cannot just go on and mention that Latif and Merimon has asked for further research in this area and they have asked for inclusion of these two variables as mediators. This is weak. This is very weak. You need to identify what research is available, what relationship has been studied and what are the limitations and gaps in existing research. Now how do you do this? If you read any paper published in these databases you will find that the, the the authors the scholars have mentioned these things in this case in this paper we actually developed a scale to measure servant leadership in higher education so what we did was we started with the scales available and their limitations the next thing we did was we assessed the mediating role of career satisfaction on the linkage between servant leadership and life satisfaction so what we did was here we expressed what research is available and what is recommended to be studied in future now for example let's let me read through one line additionally the authors could only find little research into life satisfaction in higher education and that too in context of student now this is what we found there were two studies that actually studied or evaluated life satisfaction in higher education but that was with the context or in the context of students not in the context of academics or the teachers so what you do is you you, you do not just express that okay this is the limitation or this has been done what you need to do is you need to express both sides what has been done what are the limitations and what you intend to do so what you do in this paragraph what has been done in this paragraph is the expression of what has been done or what has been or what is available sorry okay now the next thing is the next thing is the theoretical lens it is extremely important that you know do not write a paper without actually focusing on the theoretical lens of the study what theory you are going to use to explain the relationship between the variables now failure to do so obviously will weaken your research now where do you express this this theoretical lens now once you have expressed the gaps and limitations in existing research what you can do is you can use the theory to express the relationship in the contribution in this case we have expressed that the research uses lmx theory to explain or ascertain the relationship between servant leadership career and life satisfaction every any good paper that you read you will find that they have expressed how or what theory they are going to use to explain the relationship between variables this is extremely important now once you have done this you obviously at the end you pro you identify the structure of your thesis or your paper now having 
once you do these seven things your introduction will be a lot strengthened and it will give you a clear edge in publication failure to have these things in your introduction would actually weaken your introduction will actually weaken your research now what's the key to identifying these things one search through good databases second download the latest papers three read read and read once you start reading you will find that you are getting at ease with identification of gaps once you start reading you will you will identify that you are you are getting at ease with identification of theories and one important thing is store your information as i mentioned in one of the previous slides that you need to store your information in the excel sheet those seven eight or nine things that i mentioned you need to store those things these are the 11 things that i mentioned you need to store those things now once you are through this and once you have written your introduction the next thing is here are a few examples that i've already mentioned but uh, let me so you start with the value of the topic and this is how you can mention the value of the topic in general in this case what we have done is or what i did in a paper was that corporate social responsibility has become a business imperative yeah, this means that businesses cannot survive without being socially responsible to the society so once you are done this the next step is your value of the topic in your area for example uh, i already expressed this example that we focused on servant leadership in higher education so why servant leadership is particularly important in higher education this is the reason it is particularly important in higher education so this is the second step you write a paragraph you write a paragraph each on the particular once you have expressed the value of the topic in general you express the value of your topic in the particular field or area now the thing is the key is that you have to read as much as possible in order to be able in to be in a position that you are able to differentiate between these sections now what existing research is available in this particular area this is the next step so what you do is you identify okay what existing research is available now here are the few examples i will obviously be sharing the slides so you can obviously go through these slides yourself as well for instance the km process in particular knowledge sharing has captured a greater part of scholarly attention in existing research the role of eo or entrepreneurial orientation has been assessed as a predictor of limited number of km process now what 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 we are doing here is we are expressing the limitations of existing research now based on these limitations based on these uh, gaps you propose your own research so gaps limitations uh, obviously these should be uh, latest past one year and you read through these papers read through their discussion and limitations and future research directions read through those papers introduction there you will find these texts this literature that you can use in your own paper one critical mistake that people do is researchers do is that they write the text without references for example if you are saying that uh, literature on life satisfaction is relatively new who are you to say this you should back your argument with with a particular reference and you will find these references in existing research moving on theoretical rents uh, there is another example let me discuss this as well okay uh, one question that was posted uh, i'll answer it right away that how how lengthy should be the theoretical lens in the introduction it should be a paragraph in the literature it should be much detailed but it should be merged with expression of relationship between variables in this case if we see that the theoretical lens for the study is knowledge based view by grant obviously you should mention the reference whose theory you are you going to use which argues that okay what the theory does is 
that it argues that organizations are social entities that use and store internal knowledge competencies and capabilities that are vital for firms survival and growth this is what knowledge based view is and it has been used ex uh, extensively in km literature by iqbal shahzad naqshbandi and jasimuddin 2008 now once you have expressed your theoretical lens the next and the more one of the most important step is your contribution to existing body of knowledge now in here there is no need to mention any reference because you have previously based everything on reference even if you mention references here obviously uh that's that's not a problem you can obviously do that okay now the research what the research aims is that research aims to assess the interrelationship between servant leadership career satisfaction and life satisfaction across three different countries and now in doing so it makes several contributions now what are those several contribution first the study contributes to the field of leadership across cultures now because there is very limited research on leadership across cultures this research can help you obviously strengthen existing research on this in this particular area the second is the second is assess the mediating role of career satisfaction between servant leadership and life satisfaction in three different countries and third there is no previous study that proposes a cross cultural research of leadership in hei's now if you would read the the introduction of this paper here is the title of the paper i will share it is with you as well i have expressed how there is no research that's why i was able to write in the contribution that there is actually no research so if you are saying that there is no research you should prove that there is no research support your argument with references and finally the study would add to leave their member exchange theory now this is your contribution to the theory this is how you mention your contribution to the theory moving on the next thing is okay uh this is particularly related to thesis uh how do you write about your problem statement research objectives and research questions so i'll quickly go through this and obviously focus on uh, the other bits more now how do you write your problem statement and then from problem statement you write or draft your research objectives and research question now after reading the into the literature the research now can narrow the, the, the researchers can narrow down the problem from the original broad problem statement for example i am interested in studying servant leadership now i search through the literature i read through the papers now i am able to narrow down my problem what i will do is i will focus on servant leadership its outcome life satisfaction and its mediator career satisfaction now i have narrowed down the problem but how will you narrow down the problem you will have to read existing research take notes create summaries put them into uh, an excel sheet now what's the anatomy of a problem statement now what a problem statement is here is a problem statement determine the extent to which career satisfaction mediates the relationship between servant leadership and life satisfaction in higher education institution now this is a problem statement now let's let's do the anatomy to identify the key terms in your problem statement look at the subjects there are there is servant leadership career satisfaction and life satisfaction these are three subjects now what are the verbs the verb is impact and mediating so you are looking at two actions you are looking at the impact and the mediating role and what are the objects higher education institutions are the objects in your statement this is how a concise concrete and complete problem statement looks like it has to have subjects it has to have verbs and it has to have objects obviously uh if it's if 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 your study is too general obviously you can remove the objects bit now how can you use this problem statement to express or develop your research objectives and research questions now look at this problem statement determine the extent to which career satisfaction mediates the relationship between servant leadership and life satisfaction now what i have done is i have used this problem statement to draft the objectives in this study 
The first objective is to identify the impact of servant leadership on life satisfaction. The second objective is to identify or to investigate the effect of servant leadership on career satisfaction. The third is to ascertain the impact of career satisfaction on life satisfaction because these are three variables. Servant leadership is linked with life satisfaction. This is one objective. Servant leadership is linked with career satisfaction. So this is another objective. The third is servant career satisfaction linked with life satisfaction. This is the third objective. And the final objective is to assess the mediating role of career satisfaction on the linkage between servant leadership and life satisfaction. Now, this is how you can use your problem statement to delineate into research objectives. Now, I'm going to use the same objectives to write my research questions. And what I've done is just changed the format of the of the objective into the into a question format. Now, how how is research question linked to research objectives and research objective linked to re problem statement? Once you answer these questions, your objectives are achieved. And once your objectives are achieved, your problem is solved. So this is how these three things are linked together. Obviously, uh, we do not have separate research objectives and research questions in a research paper. We normally have a problem statement, more or less. But if you are writing a thesis as a, as a research scholar, obviously this could help you. Thank you. Now moving on uh, to the next section. Uh, how you obviously you can mention about the proposed structure of your thesis and paper that you have started with the introduction this is followed by the literature review then the methodology then the uh, analysis and finally the discussion section that will have uh, implications and limitations and future research direction as well you'll find this paragraph in more or less every single paper you can just copy it paste it and rephrase it more or less it's the same moving on to more important view things literature review how do you write your literature review now the purpose of the literature review is to help the researcher build on the build on the work of others and to make informed decisions during the various stages of the research project a review of literature identifies and highlights relevant themes and documents significant findings frameworks theories instruments how existing research has op operationalized different constructs so this is what literature review does for you now, once a, once a concept is operationalized, it is, or is, it is measurable, it is called variable. Till it is not operationalized, till it is not measurable, it is called a construct. That's the difference between a construct and a variable. Now, you need to document your literature review as well. You can use the same sheet and obviously create another section like operationalization. And in there you can define or you can mention the definition of each and every concept and why that particular concept is important. Once you have that sheet ready, writing the whole literature would become very easy. Uh, we are planning a workshop on using Mendeley for literature writing as well. So stay tuned. Hopefully uh, next time uh, since we have learned a number of lessons from this first uh, uh, webinar. Hopefully, uh, next time we'll be much, much prepared and I uh, regret that there was some inconvenience. Now, moving on. Literature review actually divided into two different sections, more or less. The first is individual, individual or independent discussion on variables. The second is you start developing the relationship between variables. So, in, in when you are writing a literature review, the first thing that you do is, more or less, you write about the variables individually. What is the variable? What is its definition? Why this variable is particularly important? Why this variable is particularly important in this particular area? Once you are through this, the next phase is your research model, your theoretical framework, your hypothesis development, expressing or evaluating or identifying the relationship between variables. Let me open another paper and obviously we'll uh, discuss that as well. Okay. So, how do you write or what do you write in each of these sections? When you are writing the independent or when you are conducting an individual discussion on variables, for example, my study is on relationship between CSR, team outcomes and organizational performance. So, if I am writing a paper, I will start with CSR. Now, in, in 
CSR or in this particular section, my focus is only on CSR. I'm not expressing any relationship of how CSR is linked with team outcomes and how team outcomes are linked with organizational performance. In papers, in research papers, what we normally is do is, uh, or as I've done in this particular paper, what we normally do is, once you have written the introduction, we start with literature review and hypothesis development. And we create a separate section on the main variable of the study. And we do not create separate section on each of the other variables. So what you can do is you can do the same because you have got limited space when you are writing a paper. So what you do is you write about your main variable separately and then you can obviously relate that particular variable with other variables. And when you are relating that particular variable with other variables, in there you can mention the definition uh, of that particular concept as well. But what if you are writing a thesis or what if the reviewer has asked you to first separately discuss each variable and then relate the variables or develop the hypothesis. So what you should mention in these or in this discussion. Obviously, the, I've tried this list to be exhaustive. What you can do is you can limit this list, keeping in view the uh, size of the paper and the comments of the reviewer. So obviously, I'll tell you which, which of the things are particularly important and should be there. The first thing that should be there is the concept of the variable. What's the definition of the variable? In here, do not mention too many, very, too many definitions. Just one or two definitions are good enough. And which definition you are going to use for your study, this should properly be mentioned. Now, is there any conceptualization of the variable in your area of study? And if possible, and if you are working on a new concept maybe, or if you are expressing uh, or focusing on conceptualization of variable, you should mention how these definitions have evolved over time. What are the key facets or key traits of these definitions? So if you are mentioning three or four definitions, you can just present your own summary of those definitions. Are there any contradictions in these definitions? What does the variable do for the organization? Why studying this variable is important? The next is, why studying this concept is important in your area of study? Status of the literature is, has there been extensive work done on this, this variable? Or is this variable particularly limited? What are the limitations of existing research in particular related to this particular variable? Now, uh, obviously, this is just a rephrase of uh, this seventh point, but still, how will the assessment of the variable help in the field of the study? How this variable or studying this variable will advance research in this particular field of study? What are the common measurement? How this variable has been operationalized or measured in existing research? And what conceptualization or operational definition are you going to use? Now, these are these are 11 things. Obviously, if you mention all these things, your paper would be obviously be, uh, beyond the acceptable length. So there are few things that you should always mention when you are writing a paper. First thing, the concept of the variable. The first point. The second thing, if you are focusing on a particular area and if there is a definition for that particular concept in that particular area, you should mention this definition. And the seventh point, seventh, eighth and ninth. These are five important points that you should always mention when writing your research paper and when you are discussing your variables individually. Here are a few examples. I will share the slides so that you can go through these examples. Uh, and there are obviously references for the papers as well. So these these uh, examples that you can use are uh, let me just go through one or two. For instance, let's say this status of literature on the variable in the field of so yes relatively little empirical research has been conducted systematically and extensively to identify the key quality dimensions of purchasing internal service particularly from per perspective of purchasing 
internal customer so there is very little research on internal service quality and internal customer so this is how you can obviously write a, about the individual discussion or individually express uh, the variables now th there is a point of caution most of the time when we are going through the thesis of our students or some papers sometimes what what happens is that they are not cautious when they, they are writing the critical literature review if you focus on those 11 points what you are doing is you are writing a critical literature review and if you fail to focus on those 11 points you are not writing a critical literature review. your literature review should not look like annotated bibliography by annotated bibliography i mean that it should not look like okay mr x said this mr y said this mr z said this and i am saying this now this is annotated bibliography this is not critical literature review your should your literature review should rather be a story where ideas are and concepts are linked together try to use latest references wherever possible try to use as much as latest pos uh, references as possible so correlate arguments with each other do these arguments complement each other or contradict each other do these definitions com contradict or complement each other however but furthermore these are the keywords that should be part of your literature review now what or what are the things that should be included when you are expressing expressing or developing a framework to establish relationship the first thing is has the previous okay let me go down to examples rather than just going through these points individually now the first thing that you should focus on is has the previous studies linked the two concept if yes what were their findings if this particular concept or if these particular concepts have been linked together previously what were their findings for example later survey data was adapt, adopted from 280 companies in uae rita and others 2009 to examine the connection between csr operations and company performance the outcome indicated that csr has a positive association with all three determinants of company performance and these are the three determinants so if you are focusing on the relationship between CSR and performance and if there is existing research on CSR and performance you should make sure that this is part of your literature review. Next thing is are the variables in any way now if there are no previous findings how can you link those variables we will be focusing on this through, through, through a theory. Now if there are linkages previously in the relationship between variables are the linkages or relationship unanimous or there are contradictory results for instance uh, we recently wrote this paper on CSR and OP and in there we found that existing research has shown that there are positive negative and no relationship between CSR now these are the studies that have found the positive relationship these are found no association so this is how you express contradictory relationship that are available in existing research now what you need to do is you need to express if there are contradictory research or relationship available in existing research now once you identify contradiction in existing research this is another solid way to express gaps that the there is no conclusive evidence with respect to the relationship and once there is no conclusive evidence with respect to the relationship there is need for further research in this relationship so this is how you express or further strengthen your gaps now why studying these relationship is important why should i study csr in an organizational performance or why should I study internal suppliers or internal customers and their impact on external service? For instance, the market sensing and responding competencies implied by high levels of market orientation result in high, highly market oriented firms knowing what their customer want. Now, if organizations study market orientation, 
they will be able to serve their customers better so whenever you are studying a relationship what you need to do is you need to express why this study or why studying this relationship would be important now it might be it might occur that this relationship might be important in your particular area or in in your particular field so studying maybe student satisfaction obviously will lead to better outcomes for the universities or the institutions again uh, i would like to express okay how now previously the previous points actually focused on has there been previous research has there been of any contradictory outcomes you need to express how the variables are linked to each other not just whether they are linked with each other or not you need to express how and why they are linked with each other this is particularly important and this is what makes your literature review more critical the next thing is for instance you are studying something that has not been studied before for instance you are studying csr uh, with the knowledge management there is hardly any research on it so how would you link csr with knowledge management when there is no existing research in this particular area so what you can do is you can look into the dimensions of csr and see if there is any available linkage of dimension of csr with knowledge management or dimensions of knowledge management so in here you are what you are actually answering the question of how these variables could be linked with each other a number of times student asked this question that there is no research available on these two variables or linkage of these two variables how can we link these two variables this is how you can link those two variables look into the dimensions of the variable look into the traits of the variable excuse me and see if you can link those those traits or dimension of one variable with the other variable this is how you can use existing research to explain the relationship between variables that has not been studied previously okay moving on now this is particularly important and i'm going to give it some time how do you use a theory to express relationship now we have already mentioned where you can locate the theory once you are ex studying existing papers and you are storing information just search the word theory in that particular paper and see what theory they have used with that particular variable that is actually your area of interest as well now once you record that information and you know that okay they have used uh, leader member exchange theory with transactional leadership or transformational leadership and career satisfaction so obviously you could use leader member exchange theory with your style of leadership servant leadership and life satisfaction or career satisfaction now go and read lmx theory and once you have actually read about servant leadership and life satisfaction and once you once you start reading lmx you will get an idea how to link these variables so do not just jump into reading the theory you need to read about your area of interest as well and then go on and read about the theory now how do you use the theory to develop this linkage let me go through this example the present study the present study argues that servant leadership will enhance career satisfaction now this is our argument now gladly we were the first one to explain the linkage between servant leadership and career satisfaction before us there was no study that actually evaluated the linkage between servant leadership and career satisfaction but again we need to obviously justify the linkage so what we did was we used lmx theory to explain the linkage now how do we how did we come up with this theory what we did was while we were studying leadership and career satisfaction i actually saw that okay people have used lmx theory to relate careers or satisfaction with leadership so i went into or delved into detail of lmx theory and identified what it means 
and then built on this argument to express the relationship. Now, the theoretical link between these two constructs can be described in light of LMX theory. So, you can use LMX theory to explain the relationship between these two constructs. The LMX theory has shown to be one of the most compelling theories for understanding impact of leadership on organizational behavior. Now, who am I to say this? So, I have to have reference for this that yes, it is a compelling theory. Now, what is the main premise of the theory? The main premise of the theory is that leadership behaviors contribute to the development and maintenance of strong interpersonal relationship between leaders and followers. And these are instrumental in helping employees reach their fullest potential. So this is the basic context of the theory. So this is how I use this existing LMX theory to explain the relationship between servant leadership and career satisfaction. That servant leadership actually is focused on the development of the followers. And in according to LMX theory, if the leader is focused on the development of the followers, they will be more satisfied with their careers. Another example is knowledge based view, where we have used knowledge, uh, the according to knowledge based view, knowledge is created, stored and utilized by individuals and not by organization as a whole. Coordinating and integrating the knowledge held by individual is a difficult task, this according to Miles. This can be made possible when an organization has knowledge experts in managerial position who are competent and know how to acquire, store and transfer knowledge. Knowledge oriented leaders are essential unit of overall knowledge process of the firms. Now what we have done here is we were actually looking into expression of how knowledge oriented leaders could influence knowledge management process. Now there is very limited research. So what we did was we used knowledge based view to express this relationship. And this is how we used knowledge based view to explain how knowledge oriented leaders can influence knowledge management process. Again, it is extremely important that you go into detail of reading the theory to be able to express such relationships. Otherwise, you might not be able to uh, express these relationships in greater detail. I hope uh, this particular section would have helped you understanding how to build a better literature review section. Next is research methodology. Obviously, uh, this is particularly important and it has to have these things in detail. The first thing is it has to have the population of your study. You need to mention the sample and in the sample you need to mention the sample size and sampling technique. Not just mentioning the sampling technique, you need to mention why this sampling technique was utilized. The next thing is what are the questionnaire sources? Sorry, uh, the three, uh, the four should be after, uh, before the, after the two. Again, the questionnaire sources. How did you, or what were the sources of the questionnaire? In here, there is another important point that one should note. Sometimes what we do is we Google our questionnaires. And whatever we find, we start collecting data on those questionnaires. It is utterly wrong. The reason that it is wrong is that research is a systematic process. So whatever you are using in your research should be systematic as well. If you are using Google to search your questionnaires, obviously those questionnaires might not have come up after a systematic process, a validated process, a reliable process. So what you should do is you should use existing research in those databases that I have mentioned earlier and use that particular link or use those particular researches or those particular databases or research papers to obviously select your questionnaire. Do not Google your questionnaire. Uh, obviously people are posting in the messages. Uh, Umar, can you look into those messages and reply? Uh, if not, obviously in the end, I'll be looking at those messages and I'll be taking your questions as well. Thank you. Now, and there's one other thing as well. If somebody's mic is open, please can you close it? There's one other thing as well. Sometimes what scholars do is they, they take the questionnaire from existing thesis. This is to a certain extent uh, acceptable, but you need to go on to the source of that questionnaire from where the thesis writer has taken the questionnaire or from where the scholar has taken the questionnaire. Okay, now again that same problem, just hold on. Okay. 
ओके जस्ट होल्ड ऑन द आई हैव पिन्ड इट व्हाई दिस प्रॉब्लम अगेन एनीवेज इट विल बी विजिबल इट्स जस्ट लोडिंग ओके नाउ so the second thing is if you are using a questionnaire from an existing thesis go to the source of that questionnaire do not just copy and paste from the thesis i've had had difficulties uh, by trusting my student on the questionnaire and it took me months to locate the original source of the questionnaire so obviously if you are a student or you are a teacher a researcher and you are working in collaboration with someone always have the sources of the questionnaire with you ready next thing is mention the data collection techniques or oh, sorry how the questionnaire was distributed did you go uh, through personal visit or was it through online how did you distribute the questionnaire how did you collect the data next important thing is okay now uh, in case you are working on secondary data you have to mention your data sources as well the next thing is analysis technique okay what analysis technique are you going to use are you going to use scm pls scm amos uh, maybe any other software why are you using this software sometimes the reviewer asks you to write that as well and another important thing that i might have missed when you are writing a paper and you cannot obviously present whole of your questionnaire just mention the example items in the methodology when you are mentioning the sources of the questionnaire and in the end if you are working on finance and economics mention the regression model as well uh, so this is these are the seven important things that should be mentioned in the research methodology let's have a look at the example as well so let's here is our paper so research methodology the population was a cement sector uh, 15 units were conducted Uh, in pakistan 500 questionnaire were distributed 277 uh, were returned this is the response rate and data was collected between this time the likert scale the sources of the questionnaire every and the uh, number of items in each construct so this is how the methodology is mentioned now obviously you would, you would say or you might say that not everything is in there well obviously it depends on the journal as well whenever i am writing i go into the paper uh, or the previously published papers in that journal and look into how they are writing their methodology i've tried to i've tried the list to be exhaustive so obviously i've already already recommended that you go into the detail of uh, the journal that you are intend to use for publication the next thing is data analysis and results uh whenever you are writing your data analysis and results section you start with descriptive statistics uh, about your respondents and if it's secondary data the means and everything else the reliability convergent and discriminant validity if you are doing a questionnaire or survey based study and if you are doing secondary data obviously you mention the techniques that you are using and why you are using those techniques panel data time series analysis how you are going to do this what technique you are going to use you need to mention those as well the next is hypothesis testing and finally your summary of hypothesis if you look into uh let's say let's go to this paper particularly easy in this paper actually we use two different techniques we use symmetrical techniques and asymmetrical techniques as well we started with our uh, reliability and validity analysis followed by structural model to test the hypothesis this is the table that reports the reliability and convergent validity followed by this table that reports the discriminant validity followed by this table that reports the hypothesis testing now again you would say that okay not everyone mentions q square or r square in their this their paper or bias corrected confidence intervals now again i would go to the same thing read the paper that has been published in the journal and see how they like their analysis this will give you a head start moving on the discussion section extremely important section very important section and most of the times when we are submitting our papers to the journals we actually do not write anything on the discussion we think that discussion is just mere expression of 
uh, the results from existing research. This is actually not true. Again, not visible. Oh, sorry, uh, just hold on. It's visible. Visible. Okay, okay. Just hold on, just hold on, just let me have a look. It's can can no no one can see the slides? It's visible. Some of them can see it. I think it might be the internet problem. You will you might see it in a minute or in, in a few seconds. Can you rejoin? Uh, sometimes, yes, I agree. Sometimes this there is this problem. Uh, what you need to do is you can rejoin, please. Thank you. Sometimes there is this problem. Sometimes there is this problem. Can you just like uh, can you rejoin, please? Okay. Now going back into the discussion. So discussion is not mere expression of what results you have in your study. It's not just mentioning, okay, we found a significant relationship between these variables. Discussion is much, much, much and much more than that. I've, I've used four much now. So I'm going to explain how. So when you are, whenever you are writing your discussion, you start with the objective of your study. So what was the objective of your study? The second thing is the, you start with expression of your hypothesis. What was your hypothesis and was it supported or not? And with that, you express how these results actually compare with previous research. Here is an example. The results supported hypothesis one and this is consistent with previous studies. So, yes, our hypothesis was supported and yes, it is consistent with previous studies. How? The recent calls have been made within the internal marketing literature for research that utilizes the functions of internal marketing to better improve employee satisfaction. So this is how our research or this particular research is in complement or is, is, is complementing existing research. Now let's give another example. Let's uh, use our example here. And I'm going to talk about one particular important thing as well. Now see, the findings provide a strong theoretical contribution to the literature because there is limited research on the linkage between CSR and team outcomes. The findings are in line with those of Lynn et al. 2012. So you start with what is your research, the objectives, second your findings and how they relate with existing research. And next. If you have used a theory, does your findings complement the existing theory? Are they parallel to the existing theory? So, and are parallel to theoretical underpinnings of social identity theory that propose a significant impact of CSR. So, using social identity theory, in this research, we explained the impact of CSR on team outcomes. Similarly, let's take another example of our, another paper. So you just not mention that, okay, yes, we found a significant impact. You need to explain whether this significant impact is parallel to existing research or not. And if it's not parallel, if it's contradictory, you need to explain the reason. Now here there is uh, there is a space for the scholars. You can mention the reason to a certain extent on your own as well. I am going to give you an example now. In this research, what we proposed was that servant leadership will have a significant impact on life satisfaction and we proposed that it will have a positive impact. But the problem is that we got a negative impact. Now, shall, should we have shelved this research? No, we, we spent almost six months doing this research. So we, did, we didn't want to shelf this research. So how did we actually deal, dealt with this particular situation? Now let's read this 
paragraph. Contradictory or contrary to our assertion and most surprisingly, the study found a negative relationship between servant leadership and life satisfaction. So our hypothesis was not supported. So obviously, as in discussion, I mentioned that you have to mention how your results compare with existing research. So if you look at the paper there, here, we have mentioned the results are contradictory to the findings of previous research. So this is how our research actually uh, compare with existing research. Now, obviously, you need to mention the reason for it. If they are, are contradictory and even if they are complementary or parallel, you need to express the reason for it. And what we did was, and here is our reason. The person oriented attitude of the servant leader makes way for safe and strong relationship within the organization. Perhaps this is the reason that we found that our relationship or servant leadership was negatively related to life satisfaction. Perhaps a good leadership makes people enjoy work, but this prevents employees to enjoy other dimensions of life. Additionally, it could be asserted that servant leadership makes people more focused on their careers rather than their life. Now, this is the reason that we used to explain why servant leadership could be negatively related with life satisfaction. Now, this is what we call discussion. Now, this is how your discussion should be. You just you just can't just like mention, okay, this is what we found or this is uh, what our results were. What you need to do is you need to compare your results with existing research and assess how your results compare with previous research. Now, why certain relationship was significant or insignificant? And why does or what does the significance and insignificance of relationship show in your field of study? Now, since you are focused on a particular field of study, maybe hospitality. So you need to express why this significance or insignificance may be important in your field of study. And this is the example for it. You need to mention in your discussion why this relationship was significant, why this relationship was insignificant. This why needs to be answered in your discussion section. Otherwise, your discussion section would be extremely, extremely, extremely weak. Moving on. Use the theory. Obviously, uh, use the theory to in your discussion whether your results are contradictory or parallel to the theory that you have proposed in your introduction and you are in your literature review. It is extremely important to use the theory in the discussion. Failure to do so will weaken your research. Next is your uh, conclusion. So conclusion, once you have dis write, written the discussion, the next thing is your conclusion and overall conclusion for your research in light of your research objectives. The limitations of your study. Okay, what are the limitations of your study? Is it related to sample, the data collection, measurement or analysis or the variables? For example, we took only one variable. Future research could take two, three, four, five, six variables. So what are the future research directions based on the limitations of your study? What moderators and mediators do you suggest? What new analytical techniques do you suggest? And finally, implications. Recently, we submitted a paper to a high quality journal uh, and they every single reviewer focused on implications of the study. And we had our implications weak. So how do you write the implications of this study? What is the importance of your study pertinent to the individual management or organization? What are the policy implications of your study? What are the theoretical implications of the of your study? Now, all these things should be part of your research. Now, uh, with this, obviously, uh, my presentation ends. I've tried to explain in detail what are the key ingredients of a good research paper and how do you get published in a, in, in, uh, in a high quality journal using uh, papers published in high quality journals. Now, I will share these papers with you and you will see that all these things that I've mentioned in this particular presentation, you will see all these things in these papers. Here is another paper that we uh, actually recently published and we can slightly just like go over uh, this paper. 
to actually recap what we started so those paper who or those students or those scholars who might have missed something during the session and then we'll take uh, a five minutes break uh, the session will be on and then we'll take uh, uh, your questions as well sure uh, aisha will take these questions definitely uh just give me a second let me just get uh, over this and then uh, obviously i'll open the chat box and i'll try to first answer the questions that are available there and then obviously i'll take the, the questions if i if I'm, i haven't answered anything okay now this is uh, one of our paper uh, you can see that uh, um, it's me and umar already there umar is a uh, co-author he's already a member and he's been say, uh, sent posting messages on the group as well and there is this professor andrea perez from spain now if you look at this paper we start with the introduction with obviously value of csr and why csr is important and then focusing on the gaps in existing research the two gaps that we focus on followed by this the next thing is these are the gaps explained in greater detail and then the the contributions of this study and we haven't mentioned the structure of the paper because the journal didn't require it so we removed it so if you see that in this paper we have mentioned we start with the value value of the topic in the hospitality industry the existing research that is available in the area and the gaps in existing research and the contribution of the study followed by this we go into the literature review section we start with corporate social responsibility what corporate social responsibility is what are the def definition why is it important in hospitality industry and we are not discussing every single variable separately so our focus of was on social responsibility to so so we first discussed social responsibility and then obviously we started or started writing about expression of relationship between variables and in there we actually defined the variable social so corporate social responsibility was defined in earlier section so whenever we are discussing a certain part, uh, relationship we actually define the variable so here we are we do not have a separate section on customer loyalty but before expressing the relationship between csr and customer loyalty we actually define customer loyalty and same is the case with all the variables in the study i'll share this paper as you, with you as well and once the relationship are expressed the hypothesis are proposed uh, this this was the model that we tested we actually tested it in uh, three different countries the next is hypo, uh, your methodology Uh, the respondents from each country the analysis technique the respond the the response techniques uh, sorry the respondents uh, the likert scale the scales of measurement the sources of the questionnaire and everything so whatever i have discussed you will find this in this paper the reliability and validity now you will see that here is common method by but this was not in any of my other papers nor in my discussion the journal needed it i put it in so in your analysis you start with reliability and validity then you write your structural model to explain the relationship between variables and finally your discussion and in there in discussion you will see that first i have explained or we have rather explained about what relationship we wanted to check now csr was found to have a significant impact with sq now this is actually similar to garcia uh, salmonez study and then satisfaction and so this is how you write your discussion not just that you found a significant relationship or insignificant relationship you need to express whether existing research found that sort of relationship or not and then if if they did how and then you need to express in light of the theory as well if you see this selected text that relationship exp is explained in light of the signaling theory that we have used in in this research as well so this is how you write your discussion and then there is detailed implication as well it took us around uh, uh how much time to publish this paper uh it took us around it was submitted in uh, 
May 2019 and it got accepted in uh, 11th May 2020 and if I could share the reviews with you uh, those were very detailed reviews critically detailed reviews so if, if you want you don't want to give this chance to your reviewers obviously you need to focus on these things uh, I again thank you very much uh, and I appreciate your patience throughout this webinar this was our first experience we have learned a lot uh, and obviously uh, in future we'll be focusing on uh, that we uh, do not make the mistakes that we have made during this session and uh, obviously uh, now I'll be taking your questions let me go through the messages and uh, and then uh, obviously I'll take live questions as well if I have, haven't answered uh, okay do not post any message now because obviously it, it scrolls down to the end uh, let me just like uh, read through these messages and if there is any question left obviously you are free to ask I'm right here thank you very much please do not uh, post any message for now okay kindly give example of variables independent and dependent and mediator okay now independent variable is one that influences something dependent variable is something that is being influenced or a variable that is being influenced now mediator mediator is something that explains the influence of IV on DV how is IV influencing the dependent variable now let's go through this example let's see this model now if you look at this model corporate social responsibility is our independent variable loyalty is our dependent variable and these four are our mediators now what does these mediator do these mediator ex actually help us explain how social responsibility will influence loyalty now let me give you a very simple example of mediator for instance when we say that okay uh, if an employee is under stress his performance or organizational performance is actually weakened now what happens is this is not how it works it works like this if an employee is under stress he will start to lower his or her services he won't give the same amount of services to the customer and same amount of service to the internal employees and this will actually influence the performance of the organization so in this case internal service and external service are the mediators between the stress and performance i hope this clears uh, this question how to choose best suitable framework for the research now uh, again there is a one simple answer and one complex answer let me start with the simple one read uh, as much as possible uh, if you are looking for a theory find out what existing papers are available on that particular variable download those papers on that particular variable and search the word theory in that particular paper and then you will know okay this particular variable has been explained in light of this particular theory for example if you are working on leadership and commitment if you are interested in working on sustainable leadership and commitment and there is no paper on sustainable leadership and commitment but there will be some certain paper uh, Alka actually asked this question so there might be a paper on leadership and commitment look at that paper search the word theory and you will find that okay this particular theory has been used to explain the relationship between leadership and commitment and when you read the theory you will know that okay same theory can be used to express the relationship between su uh, sustainable leadership and commitment search through existing papers and see what theories they have used and store that information okay uh, can you explain more on contribution is it similar to no this is very important question from uh, Hiranya no contribution and significance are two separate things contribution is your contribution to existing research contribution is your originality significance is the benefit of your research significance is how your research will benefit the organizations maybe the individual maybe the society the critical word in 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 in, in the research 
for theory or theoretical contribution is contribution so do not mention the significance of your research obviously there could be theoretical significance of research but obviously the jargon that we use in research uh, should be obviously kept in mind okay uh, how detailed should be the theory obviously if you can justify it in uh, a paragraph that should be good enough in the literature review obviously you can go, go uh, more than one paragraph as well uh, okay i'm going to them a bit too quickly yes sure i'll definitely email this uh, uh, i'll say i'll i'll um, uh send you the link for the uh, for the the presentation you will find this presentation and a lot more other presentations as well on that link uh thank you bishnu uh, greetings from pakistan okay thank you very much rakesh for liking the session uh, we are recording this session obviously i'll edit it and put it on uh, youtube as well so that you can see hopefully i can do it today uh, but definitely this week okay what if the topic has no existing literature christiana james uh, meaning there are no gaps in the literature how do i address that very important question and uh, these days when we say that you should study something that has not been done before this is very pertinent question now for instance if you are studying something that has not been done before obviously if i am studying the relationship between say uh, let's say this again uh, i'm going to refer to my own paper and i'll share this paper as well uh, just hold on okay in this paper actually the relationship that we evaluated or assessed they weren't assessed before they were never assessed before social responsibility and team identity social responsibility and team efficacy social responsibility and team commitment social responsibility and team performance previous to our research there was only one paper previous to our research there was only one paper on csr and team outcomes and how do i know that because i searched web of science uh, there is a video on web of science uh, because web of science let you search all these databases together all together emerald sage springer jest all all together so in that search i only found one paper on csr and team outcomes and that was one uh, that was by lin so then i decided okay i'll work on csr and team outcomes but there is no existing research how would i write my literature so i when i obviously was working on existing research i found out that okay uh, csr and team outcomes has one paper but existing research failed to evaluate the impact of csr on team identity team commitment so but when i was going through the literature i found out that whenever you are studying team identity or identity or commitment or efficacy social identity theory is used to explain the relationship now once i identified this i now i know that okay social identity theory is used to explain the relationship or is used to explain relationship when you are using uh team identity and variables like this then i started reading social identity theory and i found out that there are bits and pieces in social identity theory that can be linked with organizations or actions of the organization and what is social responsibility it is the action of the organization and this is how i linked social responsibility with team outcomes you read this paper and you will get to know this is how i i did there is another way as well that i highlighted when i was discussing the literature review every single variable that you are interested in studying has got its own definition and in the in that definition there are characteristics related to that particular uh variable or there are dimensions of that particular variable so what you can do is you can look into those characteristics of that variable and try to link those characteristics with the other variable or the characteristics of the other variable these are the only two ways that can be used to link variables that have no existing literature you either search through theories 
that have been used pertinent to those variables and use read those theories and use those theories to link the variables and obviously the second is complementing the first look at the dimensions of that variable look at the traits of that variable look at the characteristics of that variable and try to link those characteristics with the characteristics of the other variable i'll uh, the papers that i'll be attaching uh, today uh, or uh, will sending you uh, I, I will send the link on the whatsapp group as well if somebody hasn't joined the whatsapp group please join the whatsapp group as well i'll share the link as well umar can you uh, or let I'll, I'll do it in a minute so if you read those papers you will get to know how i i, I and my co-authors have used theories and other means to express relationship between variables that have not been done previously i hope this answers the question uh, question of christiana okay uh, it's not possible uh, okay i don't know what's not possible okay uh, research gaps always is always exist in the body of knowledge you need to just find out well that's to a certain extent true and to a certain extent uh, maybe false as well if it's a uh, research gap is explicit obviously somebody would have suggested okay this is the uh, the gap this is what the future researcher should do but sometimes you find the gaps on your own as well for example i am searching through the literature on how csr could influence knowledge management processes or knowledge worker satisfaction and i could not find any research on this so this is something that i found this was not recommended by someone so obviously but how do you get to this implicit gaps obviously you will have to read read and read i'll share the papers thank you definitely yasir sir uh, the the slides will definitely be shared okay aisha has asked this question uh, that how can we suggest the mediator and moderator how can we justify that these are suitable for future research now if you have written the paper you would have obviously understood or read the literature in detail now once you read the literature in detail you will get to know the concept and once you get to know the concept you will get into this position that you would you can recommend okay this variable can be linked with this variable as well for instance again in this study we actually focused on four team outcomes but there are other team outcomes as well other team outcomes uh, may include uh, team efficiency uh, team self esteem maybe team communication maybe team formation so these are other team outcomes that you can link with social responsibility and obviously they are linked with performance as well moderators obviously moderators are something that strengthen or weaken the existing relationship so when you are reading you will find out that these are the variables that could strengthen or weaken the relationship between these variables the best answer is to find out the mediators and moderator is to read the literature on those particular variable see what people have suggested the are the outcomes of a particular variable and then those outcomes can be act as an antecedent to another variable so if a particular variable is an outcome to one variable and an antecedent to other variable it can become a mediator between those two variables and this is how you can obviously suggest original research by suggesting your own mediators i hope this answers the questions aisha i uh, sure the papers will definitely be uh, Sure. Okay, Deepika has asked this question. I have a very simple model having three variables: one DV, one IV, one DV, and one moderator. However, the model is supported by a theory and research gap derived from latest study. But still, the model looks very simple. Will that join? Okay. Now it depends. Uh, we have got a simple paper as well with one mediator, one independent, one dependent. Now it depends that whether these relationship have been tested previously or not. Now this question was asked by Deepika. now if these relationship one of the, even one of these relationship has been assessed previously this will weaken your research now if none of these relationship have been assessed previously this will strengthen your research 
now if this relationship that you are checking is 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 you are checking in a, a field or in an area where there has been no research using these variables obviously this will strengthen your research i hope this answers the question dipika and again this this is important sometimes the the model is not that particularly strong your expression is strong it's how you are expressing the gaps limitations and contribution of your study sometimes i found i've seen models that are very good these are the models that could have published in three star journals but the problem is their expression was very weak it's how you express your a model is particularly important okay my query is how do we understand impact factor journal and its impact associated with social impact or contribution okay vishnu uh, thank you very much for uh, your question now impact factor journals Uh, are basically referred to as high quality journals impact factor is calculated based on citations now these citations normally are calculated by clarivet analytics and are available in journal citation report so anything any paper available in jcr is normally referred to as uh, an impact factor uh, journal okay uh i think i have missed something here uh, what is the what if my topic has no okay uh, i think i missed something just hold on okay yes uh, and impact factor associate okay social impact or contribution now these journals are bound to have a social impact although these impacts are particularly weak in uh, case of asia or south asia but in us or in these developed countries corporations societies actually take heed to the research published in these journals the corporations focus on these journals they sponsor the corporation sponsors these journal to conduct research for them so there they have got more social impact or corporate impact in comparison to pakistan or sorry uh, india or other developing countries sir can, can we drop a few items from the questionnaire or do we have to adopt? you can only drop items from a questionnaire if you have got a legitimate reason if you have got uh, a, a a a valid argument if the items are not reliable if the items are not valid you can only then delete otherwise it will affect the content validity of that particular scale how can we develop moderating okay hypothesis for moderating variable asim uh, has asked this question now if you want to develop hypothesis for moderating variable you need to understand what a moderator is a moderator strengthens or weakens the relationship between variable so when you are developing hypothesis for a moderator you need to justify or provide justification that this variable or inclusion of this variable will help us or will help improve the impact of that particular variable will help improve the relationship between variables will or normally uh, you can use different theories uh, for this as well so what you need to focus is on that you need to justify that how this variable will impact uh, the variables already in the relationship this is the simplest way to do it okay as you here as asked for reviewer comments sure i'll share the reviewer comments as well what is the difference between hypothesis and research questions okay now if you are asking for uh, a simple difference uh, what you do is you propose your problem statement then based on your problem statement you write your research objectives based on your research objectives you propose your research questions and based on your research question you draft or you put in your hypothesis simple simply speaking but in another world Uh, the difference is that research questions are mainly past part of qualitative research while hypotheses are testable and predictable and are part of quantitative research research gap is always existing body of knowledge need okay uh, sorry i have to go down 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 okay 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 how many articles okay aftab has asked questions how many articles okay how to present and write a research gap uh, obviously asim uh, i've talked about this and obviously i've mentioned all these things uh, dude these are the things that are critical and should be part of the your write up now how do you write it actually you have to have these things in your write up now in order to learn how to write you have to read this is from my own experience you cannot learn how to write unless you start reading read good papers and start writing and be critical to yourself just start reading 
and use these ingredients that I mentioned in this uh, presentation. How to present, oh sorry, uh, how many articles are needed? Well, obviously, uh, that's too subjective a question. If you can justify your uh, article, if you can justify your gaps with 10 papers, good enough. If you can justify it with 30 papers, good enough. But more or less, I've seen that there are 80 to 100 papers in every research article. So which on which bias we drop items from the questionnaire. Okay, questionnaires obviously have already talked about this. Uh, unless or until there is a reliable and valid reason for it, you cannot drop it. Can we study? Can a study consist of both directional? Yes, obviously a study can have both directional and non-directional hypothesis. Uh, can you shed light on stated gap versus derived gap? Okay, uh, a paper. Okay, if you find a gap in a paper that they have recommended that, okay, uh, this should be taken as a gap this is stated gap derived gap is your implicit gap that you find out on your own i failed to find out a study on csr and knowledge management processes so this is a derived gap because i kept on searching and couldn't find one what is the appropriate manner to write the limitations of the study now rakesh uh, in order to write the limitations of the study you need to mention okay what are the limitations pertinent to data data collection, respondents, uh, the, uh, the variables that have been studied. Okay, kindly shed light on study. Okay, I've already done that. For the chapter discussion, we prefer to research. Okay, you can do both. You can, uh, Nasrul, uh, Nasrul, sorry, I cannot, uh, Fadrullah, Nasrul Fadrullah, uh, Isa. Uh, yes, you can uh, use both. Uh, sometimes it de it's dependent on the type of study. Sometimes it's dependent on the uh, journal I normally focus on expressing the objective and then doing my discussion uh, Rakesh thank you very much for your invitation I would request if we can arrange more online session I am I would uh, love to present to anyone anywhere in the world uh, we can talk about this um, uh, you have got my number you can whatsapp me you can you can you will have my email as well and you can write to me uh, my e email me as well thank you Rakesh thank you okay um, Very important question uh, by Kasim that kindly explain a little about what type of statement to consider from previous literature. What crafting literature review for moderator and specifically when we are introducing a new moderator, what should we write? This is very important and this gives me an idea for uh, a short video as well. Thank you, Kasim. Uh, I'll just keep a copy of this and do a video on this as well. Uh, just in case I fail to uh, clearly explain it here. Now, what literature? Because the, the paper, if we are studying 100 papers, there will be thousands of lines in those papers. Now, you need to be very critical when you are writing, you are uh, reading a paper. Now, how do, can you be critical? Let's say, uh, let me ask this question from all my participants. Let's say if I'm searching something uh, in my house. Let's say I'm searching for sugar. And I go into my bedroom and start searching for sugar. Will I find sugar in my bedroom? Obviously not. Sugar is not. Uh, uh, th there is no place for sugar in my uh, bedroom. But if I s go and start searching. And whole day I spend uh, my day in searching sugar in my bedroom. In my drying room. In my dining room. Even if I go to my bathroom and searching for sugar. I won't find it. Even if I spend thousands of years I won't find it. I will only find sugar in maybe 5 seconds in my kitchen. The same applies to research. If you are finding for gaps or gaps in existing research, if you are finding for limitations in existing research, you will find it in the introduction and the discussion. And in the discussion, you will have to go to limitations and future research direction section. If you are going to find or if you are trying to find whether this relationship was substantiated in existing research or not, you will find it in the literature review and or in the analysis section. So you should know that where to find this particular information and go directly into that section and copy that information for yourself into the, uh, 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 the, the uh, Excel sheet. But again, this is from my own experience, past 5-6 years experience. Read, read, read. Uh, 
uh, I'm planning maybe uh, a day after tomorrow how to read a research paper. Let's do uh, a session on how to read a research paper. I will obviously share uh, one paper that we are going to read together. So next workshop, next webinar on how to read a research paper. I will initially share that paper with you that we are going to read together. So get a print out of that paper. We are going to read it together and I will tell you how to read a research paper. So uh, stay tuned for that as well. Uh, so uh, Kasim, uh, I hope this answers your question. We'll be obviously doing a whole session maybe this week or maybe next week, but that will be our next session. I hope all of you can tune in for that as well. Question and hypothesis simultaneous use, is it necessary, can be used separately? Well, yes, they can be separately used. In experimental research, can we use research question instead of hypothesis? Yes, both can be used unless or until, or until you can justify this. Uh, experimental research is a modern way to conduct research in behavioral uh, studies. Uh, I hope we can uh, conduct a seminar on that as well uh, soon. How can we be sure about reliability and validity of self-developed interview scale? Very good question. If you are interviewing and you have developed a scale and that's the interview questions and if those are qualitative, you have to go to experts. For example, I am an, uh, I, I write on CSR, so I do get these questions uh, from people who are working on CSR and they ask me if these questions are good enough. So you can go to your supervisor, people who have worked on in this area, send them these questions and they will provide their input. And if they say that this questionnaire is fine, yes, your questionnaire is fine, Alka. You can use it and you can refer to it in your methodology that these are the people you, who you consulted and these are the people who said that this questionnaire is reliable and valid. What is a substantial contribution at PhD thesis level? Would introducing a mediator or moderator would be a substantial contribution? Mushtaq, uh, good question for PhD student. Yes, again, mediator and moderator are substantial contribution. But apart from just mediators and moderators, you should conduct the study in an area where it has been it has not been conducted. You might use obviously to further advance. You might a new analysis. Might use a new analysis technique as well. But Mediator and moderator obviously can be a substantial contribution. I agree. Okay, moving on. Uh, thank you. Good evening, Vinay. In experimental research, does sample and population uh, is the same or a different? Sample and population by definition are different. Even if you are doing experimental research and you are conducting an experiment, obviously your experiment might be uh, 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 limited to a particular sample. So obviously these are two different things. Please share sample cover letter also. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll do that as well. I've got a whole video Deepika on uh, writing a research paper in which I've talked about detail on cover letter. I'll share that video as well uh, by addressing you. Uh, just give me a second and I'll obviously share the WhatsApp link with you people so that you can obviously uh, get into uh, the WhatsApp group because uh, I'm more or less uh, much will be shared uh, there as well. Uh, Umar, can you please? Uh, I'm just sh sharing the link again in research course. Can somebody just copy this link onto the chat box, and so that others who have who are not part of the uh, the group can obviously join in. Umar, can you share this link, please? Thank you. Or anyone else? Thank you. Okay, uh, what is the diff what is the relevance of doing PDF? PDF or PhD topics should be the same. Uh, I'm not that a PhD. Uh, what's PDF, Alka? If you can like uh, mention it in the text, and then obviously I'll answer. Uh, I might not have much knowledge about it. Okay, kindly arrange more session like this. Thank you, Mubin uh, or Shah Saab. Uh, definitely will obviously. Okay, um, kindly mention free data analysis testing software. Okay, very good question, Mars. Thank you for joining. Uh, Mars is one of my uh, student or was one of my student. Okay, there are a number of uh, softwares. Uh, uh, I used to use SPSS, but since uh, now I have pledged that I won't use uh, illegal software, so I no longer use SPSS. Instead, I use Jamovi. Uh, PSPP, JS, JASP, if, we, if you people are interested, obviously we can use or we can have a session on these free softwares as well, using them instead of uh, SPSS or how to use them instead of SPSS. Sure, we'll have that 
a workshop as well i'll share the name in the group as well how can we find a uh, quality journal and predatory journal uh, bishnu the easy way is uh, the databases that i have mentioned just go into those databases download jcr download abdc list uh, and easy these list or these journals are quality journal everything else uh, even scopus you can search the journal in, in in scopus everything else is not recommended i might sound a bit harsh but this is how it should be obviously if your higher education commission in your country has recommended a few journals obviously those are not predatory okay finding sugar or taking sugar experience uh maz will answer that later okay uh agrs yes they have categorized it uh, this is kabir uh this is something related to pakistan uh wr included in uh, why category by agrs well agrs they have created their own this is uh kabir is talking about pakistan agrs is uh, pakistan's own uh, recognition system and they have done their own recognition so obviously in pakistan you will have to follow that so they have got this journal for example journal of enterprise information management it is an impact factor journal but for computing they have put it in into x category although it is a w category journal because it's an impact factor journal it should have been there so that's how they are uh, if you've got any other question uh, related to this post it okay how to find research gap i mean specifically from the area of okay kashif you can just go into limitations and future research directions of the paper and find out the gaps now let me answer this question in slightly more detail do not just search gap from one single paper for instance i found a gap from one paper on using career commitment as a mediator between servant leadership and life satisfaction okay so i've taken career commitment as a mediator from one paper now what i do is i look for another paper i look at another paper and they say that uh, servant leadership the this the future research should look at the impact of servant leadership on uh, say uh, promotion focus now what i have done is i have taken gaps from two different papers this is important if you take gap from one single paper somebody else in the world might be doing the same thing and then your research become redundant or repetitive so try to take gaps from two different papers three papers four papers might be how do you use excel for literature review uh, ayara miss ayara uh, sure i'll just use it in a minute i'll open an excel sheet and guide every one of you sometimes i'm confused about major difference primary and secondary okay primary research when you go on and collect data yourself through a questionnaire secondary research when data is already available and you use it for your research thank you for the informative input thank you very much adnan uh thank you thank you okay hello uh, reading how many papers are fine uh well if you are looking for gaps i would recommend at least 10 to 20 papers uh more or less to get published post doctoral research oh yeah okay well obviously uh, phd phd is more important once you are done your phd it's the highest form of degree and then obviously you can go for post or doctoral research it's always a good idea to get trained to get more uh, to work with senior professors and improve your skills i myself am um, looking for a post doctoral opening okay yes sir i want to learn new softwares yes sure we'll share new new softwares and we'll work on new softwares as well okay now uh, i'll open the uh, audios okay how content analysis is appropriate okay just hold on how content analysis appropriate when we are taking reviews from print media or e paper newspaper well obviously yes content analysis can be useful content analysis from media or other sources other than article it actually it actually depends on the type of research you are look uh, are going into uh, you can obviously do any kind of research or look into any kind of material but it depends on what kind of research you are looking into if i am doing research on terrorism obviously i will have to go into newspapers if i am working on leadership or maybe a particular find a kind of leadership i think uh, a review or content review or detailed review or systematic literature review of our existing articles is enough